right, everyone, welcome to the Hands Up for Trad afternoon show. As ever, we have some brilliant guests today. But first, I wanted to remind you about our Hands Up for Trad music club this weekend. We have Talisk this Friday 28th and Brayback on Saturday the 29th, both at 8pm. Be brilliant to see you there. The gigs are live on YouTube and they have real clapping in them and you can clap along and join in. If you would like to get a ticket for it, if you go to handsupfortradmusicclub.co.uk and uh, say hello. Any questions? Ask us in the comments. You can do that today. Uh, we're broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Or is it Periscope? Who knows, actually. I can never work it out anymore. Anyway, remember and tell us where you're watching from. Always brilliant to, to hear from you. And please welcome our brilliant guests today, Jen Butterworth, Dave Milligan and Ailey Robertson. <laughs> You guys deserve a cheer. <laughs> um, how is uh, how are you doing today, guys? Good. Tell me, Ailey, have you done any live, online, or physical gigs since the lockdown? Yeah, I've done. Um, I've done quite a bit of online teaching for sure, um, and I've done a couple of online gigs now. I think maybe three, um, but nothing recent. But I did. I was in Italy at the start of. August and did some real live gigs, oh, yeah, which was yeah. even more exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about? Um, a bit different coming back. Um, up in, in Northern Italy, near Milan, of all places. Um, but yeah, so so two real gigs for people, which was nice. Oh, um, amazing. Yeah. Well, anyway, before uh, we carry on, we're going to have a really cheery video. It's from Ewan Henderson. We've actually shown it before, but it's raining out of my window, and I thought this is the perfect video, the song of the brandy from Ewan's album, Shall. Fantastic stuff. That's <laughs> right. Uh, brilliant. Fantastic. Please welcome guitarist and singer and lots of other things, Jen Butterworth. How are you doing, Hello. Jen? Very good. Yourself? Uh, very good. Now, you've, you're an old hand at the Hands Up for Chad afternoon show. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, today, you're on to talk about this fantastic new project that you've got called Karafoki, and uh, yes. I love it. It's one of the best things. So tell us about it. 
Yeah, I'm still I'm still building it, which is taking a lot longer than I expected. But essentially, it's um it's a library of backing tracks, so that if you're stuck at home and you're not able to get out playing, um, or even maybe when sessions are happening again and you want to practice before you go out and stuff, then um, it's just a nice place that you can go and play some tunes along with me playing cyber guitar. <laughs> so how do how how does it work then? Um, so at the moment, uh, it's going to be like a subscriber website. So I'm looking at probably around the same prices like Netflix and streaming channels are. And um, and you just sign in and you get access to the library. And I'm going to start with 50 tunes. That's my kind of like aim. I kind of thought it would be good to have a decent catalogue before starting. But essentially, I'm going to just keep feeding tunes into the same thing. And at the moment, there's three different tempos. So there's a kind of fairly slow and then there's a medium pace and then there's a faster one. And um, so you can join in with them, but I'd love in the future, if it takes off, um, to just keep developing it and maybe get an app and have like a sliding scale of tempo. But there's just a lot of stuff that for me, starting it out is going to be a bit too much to achieve in, in a short period of time. So that's where it's heading to. But the cool thing is that um, people can get in touch and make requests. And if it's OK with the composers to put up backings to their tunes, then I can go for it. So it's kind of, you know, the world is fairly open there, which is quite good. It's a brilliant idea, actually. I mean, as you coined it, Caraflix for... <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> um, so, do, if I, so if I go to your website, which is carafoki.com, and I know it's yep. still just to be launched, but you can get there and then the link to your own website on that page. Uh, mm-hmm. And I and I've a sign up. Do I download the music and play along? Um, no, you just stream stuff online. Um, so you can just um, click on the player. There's like a wee player window for every tune. So you can just pick your tunes and make a wee list and, and jump your way through whatever you fancy. Um, also, there's going to be sheet music available for some tunes as well, because um, for composers that are writing stuff, if they're not bringing out sort of tune books quite regularly, there's a lot of tunes that they're writing that are getting played in sessions, but there's not really a, a sort of, you know, a place to learn them from. So um, I'm also creating a sheet music shop that means... Um, the the money just goes to the composers as well, which is is great. So, um, so it's possibility of learning the definitive tunes from composers too. That's really exciting. Well, we're going to actually watch uh, a a young lady called Mimi, and she has she's going to show us in action, and uh, she's playing the tune. I think it's by Finley McDonald, isn't it? Elliot Finn McDonald. Mm-hmm. And. So for everyone watching at home, this is how it works. That's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, and I think amazing. And I think what's brilliant about this project is uh, it's actually really hard as someone learning traditional music to actually play with someone as good as you. With some, <clears throat> it's hard, you know. It's uh, we you play with your friends and everything, but someone who actually does it for who really understands it is a is an amazing opportunity. So, um, Jen, so also you have been doing lots of different things. You know, you've set up a patron. Uh, Mm -hmm. What is a patron? Uh, so it's um it's again sort of a, a wee kind of subscriber service where um people who want to support you financially can sign up for for different things that you can offer to give them whether it's um I'm doing sort of guitar lessons but also um little performances and sharing bits and pieces of what's been going on behind the scene um all sorts of stuff so I guess when we're gigging it can be a way of seeing the backstage of what you're getting up to or anything like that as well so and uh, Ailey you have a patron as well don't you yeah, I do. I've got one for harp teaching. And how does that uh, so again, work? 
Again, it's sort of people subscribe to, there's a couple of different levels and then they get access to um, sheet music and arrangements and video lessons. And there's a kind of monthly heart chat where we talk about like kind of a technical aspect and um, yeah, things like that. So it's, it's been really popular so far, it's good. And what's this month's technical aspect? This month we were talking about uh, developing good practice routines. Oh, excellent, yes. Yeah, excellent. Maybe you can share that with me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> For step one, find concertino. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you play the piano, it's hard to lose it. Dave's even sitting in front of his. <laughs> so one of the the uh, other things you've been doing, Jen, is the Scottish Music Academy. Yes. What is that? Yeah, there's quite a few of us on that. It's um, it's this, it's an online tuition um website and a bunch of us have been creating like short courses um so you can sign up and you can i think if you sign up you can sort of jump around all the different ones so it means if you're a multi-instrumentalist or interested in trying different instruments you can do that but there's some great tutors involved and there's different levels from sort of beginners up to advanced and then i think the hope is just to continue like adding new courses to the the website so that you can you can keep track but i've i've got some sort of advanced guitar stuff around chords and um, back in um, session tunes and and teaching some melodies and stuff as well. Now, one of the, the things a lot of us have had to learn is throughout this uh, lockdown time is how to make videos. And I know we're going to be talking about Dave's uh, fabulous videos quite soon. And you've made lots of videos as well, Ailey, haven't you? Yeah, I've been doing a fair few as well. It's been a steep learning curve. <laughs> Yes, they just they just happen really quickly. <laughs> oh, so fast! When once if you feel that you've got you've got too much time in a day, just make a video and the day disappears. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but Jen, you've made some brilliant videos and we've showed them all on the Had Never Tried <laughs> Afternoon Show of the of the whenever whatever I'm talking about. <laughs> and, <laughs> And Are we covers project? Yes, so you have a covers project. Tell us about that because we're going to watch a video from that. Yeah, so like I guess that when, when lockdown happened, uh, I was sort of looking at the kind of general musical landscape and going, I, I'm, I'm stuck in my house, but that means I can make a connection with anybody anywhere. And I thought, who do I fancy playing some music with? And I've kind of always fancied playing some music with Sam Sweeney because I think he's a totally brilliant player. And um, I've met up with him and Rob at a few festivals and stuff and thought they were totally great fun. And we've all got a kind of love of playing cheesy 80s hits <laughs> on folk instruments. So I just kind of reached out and s just to see whether they'd be interested in doing it. And it's kind of just sort of gone from there, really. Well, it's fantastic, actually. So uh, this song, we are going to... It's, you're the voice. Who originally sang this? John Farnham. John Farnham, <laughs> my goodness. Let's have a watch. That 
is fantastic. And what a voice Sam has. Excellent. Totally. Uh, let's just say hello to a few people who are watching. Uh, hi to Ivan, who's in Bolivia. Hi, Margaret. Good to hear from you. Uh, Graham and Wet King's Kettle. Uh, <laughs> Linda from Fife. Uh, Heather from Preston. Uh, Nina from Torridon. And uh, <laughs> uh, Heather's aired talking about the pointless subtitles on Facebook. Yeah, they're flipping useless. <laughs> uh, Tom Toy from Japan. Fantastic. Hi, Joni from Tobermory. Beautiful Tobermory. And hi, Kirsten from Denmark. Remember, keep coming if you're watching. Please tell us. Always good to hear from you. Right, next up, we are going to talk to the fantastic piano player, Dave Milligan. Hiya. <laughs> it's funny, usually, Dave, when you start, before you talk, everyone just claps. <laughs> We're all <Yeah>. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Clapping like this. <laughs> so, Dave, uh, congratulations on your imminent release of your new album, Memento. How did the Thank album you. come out? How did it come about? <laughs> How did it come about? Uh, I actually, I didn't really mean to record an album. It's uh, it's not a lockdown album. It was uh, done way before then, but uh, I actually got some support from Creative Scotland. Uh, I was really kind of getting uh, a little bit uh, frustrated with trying to record improvised music. And I was finding that my process wasn't really doing me any favors. So this opportunity came up uh, I've I've worked with the the bass player and the drummer Danilo Gallo and UT Gandhi. I've been working with them for a while, uh, and this opportunity came up uh, to go and record in a studio in Northern Italy, uh, and so I just jumped at the chance. And uh, it was kind of like an opportunity just to spend some time recording. And I never really meant to to make an album. It was more like a uh, just a wee experiment, actually. But we recorded for a couple of days and ended up with like 20 tracks. Does that mean that there's Memento, the sequel, coming out? There could be. <laughs> be. Have you been speaking to Jen? I mean, is there an opportunity for Caraflex here? Carafoki. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the, it's a great cover. Uh, what is the cover? We're seeing it on screen at the moment. Oh, are we? Uh, the cover is actually, it's the, when I first arrived, um, it's a little town called Cavalico in the province of Udine. Uh, and I didn't really know exactly where I was going, but when we arrived uh, in the evening, that this was the view that I saw, obviously not looking blue like that, but, uh, but that is the, uh, the Italian Alps, the mountain range that uh, I could see there. And, it was just such an incredible sort of breathtaking view. Um, uh, that's kind of where the image came from. Oh, great. And uh, on, I mean, when you were growing up, because on the album there's a, I don't know how to best describe it, there's a couple of folky numbers. <laughs> Did you uh, listen to sort of folk music when you were growing up? Uh, yes and no. I can't really say that the uh, a lot of what I heard came from uh, my dad's record collection and my brother's record collection, uh, and a lot of that tended to be very much jazz orientated, a lot of classical, and then leaning towards pop. Uh, but the only kind of live music that was happening around where I lived um, was was folk music, really. So uh, as a as a youngster. I sometimes used to nip up to the the top pub in Denham, uh, and Watty Robson, uh, he's a oh. kind of border fiddler, would be sometimes come in with his fiddle, uh, and I would sit down at the piano and have absolutely no idea what he was doing, but uh, <laughs> would try and join in. So, yeah, good memories. Uh, one of the things you've been doing with this album in the run up in the last week, you've been making a, a little video every day. Uh, <laughs> talking about each of the tracks and it's been really nice, I've really enjoyed them it gives you an insight and 
what they were going to watch one of these little videos, just a short video. It's called "They Said It Was About You." Track four. They said it was about you. This is a tune that I named for my daughter, Ella. She was quite young at the time and just after I wrote it, I played it for some friends. And the first thing they said when they heard it was, that's about Ella, isn't it? They were right. Some people have described this as a folk ballad. Other people have said that it reminds them of a jazz standard. It's actually just a simple little tune, like a wee story that comes to you every now and again. I recorded a few ballads in the studio, uh, but this is the one that I wanted to put on the album. Fantastic, and you can get that at davemilligan.bandcamp.com. So, I mean, it's really nice. I mean, I've written a lot of music for my family and I, I really en enjoy it. It's a nice thing to do. Uh, is, is anyone else, have you, do, have you written for your family, Alien Jen? Um, I've written some tunes for my two nephews who've been born, but other than that, not, not a huge amount, actually. Hmm. Uh, me neither. Maybe I should. Yeah. <laughs> I've, written a, I've written a few, but one... I wrote a reel for my son, Charlie, and my one for my other son, Joe. And actually, it's really nice because they kind of like them. It's about the only thing they like that I do. <laughs> 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 but it's definitely they can hang on to it. <laughs> the video that I just put up today is uh, like one of the other tracks is one that I wrote for my dad, uh, Sandy 70th. And uh, I, one of the things I say in the video is that if you're going to, if, if you have family that are musicians, one of the things you have to expect is to get tunes instead of birthday presents. <laughs> <laughs> it does make very good for, for a last minute christening stroke wedding present. Yeah. <laughs> As I like to tell people, it's, wor it's priceless. <laughs> Indeed. So, uh, Dave, I mean, you... Uh, like everyone else, you're busy, and uh, in the last couple of years, you have spent quite a lot of time working with Mark Knopfler on the Local Hero play. Were you the MD for that? Not quite the MD. I was the musical supervisor for that. Um, yeah, that was uh, it. Was an amazing experience, actually. I loved doing it. Never really saw it coming. Somebody said to me the year before, "It's like." musical theatre that's great you want to be it's like um but yeah it was such a, a fabulous experience and mark is great uh, to work with and and um i learned so much uh on kind of all aspects of the you know not just from the kind of theatrical side of things which came later but just working in the studio with him and recording some of the songs um yeah i loved it what does a Lovely. musical supervisor do? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> they might not do the same thing as I did, uh, but the, basically the, the, the music that Mark was writing and we were kind of putting these songs together, uh, my job was really to, to try and, and get the music that he was creating uh, to sort of transition to the pit. Uh, so that the bands that were that are performing the music are playing it in in the right way, uh, and the musical director, um, you know, it's their job to kind of like lead the band and conduct and and work with the singers and uh, and stuff like that. So uh, it was more of a, a hands off role. Uh, so I wasn't actually involved in the performing side of things, but there was a fabulous band um, and some of our. Uh, our own Scottish musicians made up the band. Uh, we had Duncan Lyle was playing bass, Patsy Reeds was playing fiddle. Um, my brother, uh, Ross Milligan, was playing guitar along with Malcolm McFarlane, Tom Gordon on drums. It was just, it was like a totally rocking band. It was great. Oh, there's uh, Margaret Stewart. Just pre-ordered Memento. Hooray! <laughs> it's worth coming on the Hands of Tried Afternoon show. 
<laughs> so um uh, we were talking before uh, we, we, at this time we're talking a lot about uh physical events and both dave and ailey are about to well not about to the end of october are going to be part of hands of a trans first physical event and that is our distill residential and that's a thing where six musicians come along and they work with Dave and Ailey in composition and improvisation. Um, don't really know how it's going to work at the moment, <laughs> but it's going to be at Western Lodge. Uh, have you have you both attended it as attendees? Yes, I have. Yeah. And you have as well, Jen, haven't you? No. Nope, oh, no, you've tried lots of times. You've always been... <laughs> too busy that's what it is actually yeah <laughs> i know that takes that reminds me yeah so that's good so i mean interesting for you guys ailey being on the other side yeah definitely definitely it's been a i guess it was probably 10 years ago since i did it as a participant so yeah a lot has, a lot has changed i guess in that time so yeah i think yeah. you were on the first one day for you i think so yeah keith tippett keith tippett poor late Keith Tippett, uh, yeah, right. yeah, that was a, he was amazing actually. Were you were you on the one alien that had when New Lanark had the spa? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> Sadly not. Time me up for a distill. Yeah. Right? <laughs> they were good days. <laughs> Well, we're we're going to watch another uh, recording, a clip of recording of another tune from Dave's album. It's called There's Always Tomorrow. Beautiful music there, actually. Uh, I want to say a few more hellos to people out there. Uh, hi, Jennifer Port. Hope you're doing fine and your new little baby's absolutely beautiful. Uh, hi to John Smith. Hi, Lindsay Murphy. Good to see you. Uh, Andy Inns from Belfort. Doogie from the south side of Glasgow. Sheila from Birmingham. Uh, Joyce from Wigtown. Uh, Scylla from Sunny Nairn. What's going on? Um, <coughs> And there's, <laughs> there's Helen from uh, London. Uh, please welcome harpist and composer Ailey Robertson. Oh. oh, hold on. That deserves a better... Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ailey, you were... Uh, I was... When we were up in Braemar last year together, you came up and did this amazing talk to all the young people. And... You gave us a, a quick run through your career so far, and I was—it was so impressive. And I just wondered if you could do that for our viewers at home. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, a very mixed career, I guess. Um, I have started off. Well, I actually started off as a geneticist. That was my my first uh, degree, and then um, went and studied um, at the University of Limerick. Did a, a master's in heart performance there. 
And so then, I guess the last 15 years have been kind of gigging, um, mostly with a band called The Outside Track, um, and then a bunch of other kind of solo projects. And then, I guess over the last kind of eight years, I've got more and more into composition, um, just finished my PhD in that two years ago. Um, and now I've kind of split my time between gigging and then writing mostly sort of classical contemporary music. That is amazing. And yeah. actually, your genetics was at Cambridge as well. It just wasn't just down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Pre- pretty amazing actually pretty amazing well we're lucky that we've got you <laughs> so um you i mean like everyone else in this program you've been doing a lot of different things now uh you've been hatching this kind of secret project which is not secret anymore called adenine yeah which is really different what is that so I mean, yeah, I guess it kind of began as a bit of an outlet for one of my kind of, um, it kind of combines a lot of the things I enjoy doing, composing and playing, and then also um, kind of weird th- sounds with synths and field recording. Um, and so it's sort of become an outlet for all of those, um, to bring them all together. And for a type of music that's much much sort of quieter, much more introspective and quite experimental in nature. So that's sort of what it's been. Yeah, and where did you where did you make it? Did you make that with Jim Sutherland? Yeah, a mixture, um, most of it with Jim Sutherland and then some with Andrea Gobby. Right, yeah, because it's a great sounding album. We're actually looking at the cover on screen, screen of it. What is the cover actually? Um, it's like an etching that I found on um, an artist from the Czech Republic on Instagram. Um, and yeah, got in touch with him and just said, I love the image, could I use it? Yeah. Because yeah, it could be so many things, couldn't it? Yeah, it, it is, it's really beautiful. Like, And when you see it up close, like it's so nice. Um, I should tell people where they can actually buy it. It's adenine1.bandcamp.com. <clears throat> Uh, so and that's on the screen just now. If Margaret, you want to go and buy it, <laughs> <laughs> it's very good actually. It's very good. Um, and also, I mean, you've been so busy. You last week you were hands up for trads single of the week. Uh, sure. Well. <laughs> with your uh, with your Ivans, how did that come? Because yeah. there's lots of great people playing on it. Yeah, so Ivan's, I mean, Ivan's is a tune that I wrote a while back um, and kept thinking, oh, I want to do something with this and was playing it. I've got a duo with Maddie Rankin and we, sort of, we play it in that. And so I always thought I would record that with her this year. But then, of course, she's in Cape Breton, I'm in Scotland. I don't think we'll see each other anytime soon. So I guess along with all becoming expert video editors, the other thing we've had to do in lockdown is become much better with technology of like, recording. Um, so I thought, well... It's often hard to teach. I think I find it hard to like learn any new skill without actually just doing something, like being really practical with it. So I was like, well, I'm going to build a tune and I'm going to make it as complex for myself as I can by just getting on loads of guests and things like that. And then I have to find out how to edit myself and how to mix myself and how to do all that. Um, so yeah, so I got um, who's on it? Uh, Moss Namini it plays concertina and Jean Deme plays some guitar on it. Um, Alice Allen plays some cello on it. Um, Sean Gray put some flute on it and Stephen Henderson did drums um, and then so they all just recorded and at their homes and sent me stems and then I kind of put it all together and, and yeah, it was good fun. Well, should we have a wee listen to a clip of it? Here it is now. Sure. lovely it's very nice yeah, when we played it on our radio shows it got lots of great comments oh that's lovely thank so you that's good uh <clears throat> margaret stewart said that she loved working with ailey one time as part of the improvisers orchestra festival yeah we did a cca that was good fun 
And she also said she's going to be broke by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Margaret. <laughs> Uh, and Tom Toy uh, from Japan said, I think he's talking about Adeline, that the CD is awesome. Oh, thanks, Tom. Do you know Tom? He's I do, yeah, yeah. Tom's a heart player, yeah. yeah. Great. Now, um, you, uh, I want to chat to you about the outside track. <laughs> I don't think there's been many busier bands over the last 10 years than the outside track. We've definitely, yeah, we've definitely had like a really good, a good stint. This was coming up for, this was supposed to be our 15 year anniversary um, in 2021, which may now be the most uneventful anniversary year of all time. But um, <laughs> yeah, we've had a good run. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's good, like many people, uh, I think like Rura, you're going to be able to celebrate their 11th anniversary. <laughs> and you can <laughs> outside track on their 16th. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, who is in the current lineup of the band? So the current lineup is um, well, really the, the band is now with four girls, which is myself, um, Maddie Rankin from Cape Breton on fiddle, um, Teresa Horgan from Ireland on flute and vocals, and Fiona Black from the Highlands on accordion, and then we have a kind of rolling sub for guitar player. Um, so yeah, that's sort of how we work it now. We should get a wee shout out to Fiona Black's Prince. Yeah, they're right. beautiful. They're, they're, they're fantastic, nice. aren't they? Yeah, they're gorgeous. Uh, we're going to watch a video then of the outside track. It's uh, it's by I've seen it to you before. It's by Martin Forey. It's one of my favourite folk music videos. It's really poppy, and it's uh, "Set You Free." Let's have a watch. Great stuff. So I uh, look forward to seeing you on your 16th anniversary, Ailey. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any anniversaries coming up, Dave? Oh, many. Many anniversaries <laughs> coming up. <laughs> uh, well, so your album's out on Friday, Dave, uh, on your band camp. So that's really exciting. Do you have a, an idea of a date for karaoke, Jen? 
Um, I'm hoping in the next two weeks I've got there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that I'm trying to sort of get through before <laughs> but um, but yeah hopefully you know yeah um, as soon as I get this recording done next couple of weeks yeah because it's going to be great actually there's nothing else like it I don't think actually unless Cheers. Dave gets in there first with the piano folky <laughs> <laughs> piano folky nah <laughs> but before, before three o'clock he's got a patron account and uh, <laughs> Um, I just want to quickly mention again Saturday, I know I'm getting a bit boring here with Friday, uh, Talisk on Friday Brayback on Saturday that's the 28th and 29th of August and you can buy tickets at handsupfortradmusicclub.co.uk it'll be lots of fun and lots of funny cheering all cr- triggered by me <laughs> um, so I, thanks very much to my guests again today Jen Butterworth, Dave Milligan and Ailey Robertson uh, we'll see you the next time. Thank you.